Hi, I'm Jesse Birch. I'm a potter and curator, and I live on the territory of the Stinemo people, Hisepka Stinemo, and I'm the curator of Nanaimo Art Gallery. So there are two, par two parts to my contribution to Imperfect Offerings. Uh, there's a teapot called Born Broken, and there's a set of cups called Cups for Richmond Art Gallery Inverted. So uh, when I was thinking about this project, I was thinking a lot about the role that ceramics have uh, when they're in our everyday lives versus when they're in an exhibition. And so um, I developed a set of cups for the Richmond Art Gallery and it's just the beginning of their life to be in this exhibition. They're going to continue on in the collection of the kitchen of the Richmond Art Gallery and they're going to be used as everyday teaware for staff or during public programming or while people are busy writing grants. So I just wanted my pots to find their way into the lives of those people who work so hard to make culture happen. As a potter, I'm interested in uh, working with available means as much as possible. So for example, when I started pottery, I was gifted a kick wheel, which is an older style of wheel. You have to use your foot to um, make it spin. And um, since I was given this, I decided I'm going to learn to use this wheel. I'm not going to go and buy an electric wheel. And so I've been using that ever since. Also, early on in my practice, um, I realized that there is a community of wood-fired potters in Nanaimo called the Tozan Society, who steward a huge kiln called the Nobori Gamma. And it has many chambers, and each chamber has carries about 500 pots, and also they also steward a smaller wood-fired kiln. So right from the beginning, I was working uh, with wood firing, which is a process that involves a lot of chance and a lot of failure and, and learning. And so that was really wonderful. But when COVID hit, of course, we couldn't gather together to make this kiln work. And so um, I had to sell a lot of pots from my own personal collection of other potters so I could buy my own kiln. And so I've been working with an electric kiln for the last year, which is a big learning curve. Um, but there's still an element of chance to it that I really like. And um, in that sense, the teapot that's called Born Broken um, came out of that chance. So um, as I was taking it out, of the kiln. There were about five teapots that I made thinking about this show and this one just looked like the right one for the show. It looked friendly to me so I was like this is the right one and I went to take the lid off and the lid was stuck and so I got this little wooden mallet and I was tapping gently around it hoping it would get loose and then I just tapped one time and it broke. And then when I was talking to Sean Dacey the curator and he told me that Naoko was going to be in the show I reached out to her and said hey I have this pot and it was born broken <laughs> would you would you do kintsugi on it for me for the show? I thought that was really lovely because then it would carry a trace of the exhibition, this this golden trace into the lives of the people at Richmond Art Gallery. Um, but also the the idea of born broken came comes from Shoji Hamada. There are also Shoji Hamada pots in the show that Naoko has fixed, and uh, Hamada is one of my pottery heroes. And uh, he said that he says that pots are born, not made. So it's this process of like gathering influence and, and, and embodying it and then it coming out of you. You don't, you don't, it's not as calculated as making something else when you're making something when it's spinning on the wheel. So these pots are born, not made. But this pot that I had when I opened the kiln, it was born broken. And so that's where the title of, of that work comes from. In regard to this idea of chance, to me as a potter, chance is like magic. Sometimes when you open your kiln, you never expected what comes out. Other times it's exactly what you expected, but when those unexpected moments and you come to a new realization or you learn something, I think that's, that's so special. So I say chance is magic, but also chance happens when you leave the pots, when you, when you give them to someone else. So I don't know what the lives of these pots will have. You know, I don't know what their lives will be, um, as a curator, uh, I also have that experience when I'm developing exhibitions with artists. I don't know what the exactly what the public's going to bring to the show because everyone brings something different to the artwork. Everyone brings something different to their relationship to the cup that they're going to be holding or the teapot they're going to be pouring. And so I love that element of chance, that part I don't know. And uh, so I'm looking forward to not knowing what my pot's lives will be into the future. <laughs> In the exhibition, Instead of having the cups right side up, I have them inverted. And that's just a simple gesture that's suggesting that 
they don't they they're not really at their full capacity until they're being used so currently they're upside down which isn't the way you would normally see them but they're only meant to be seen in this exhibition and so that's that's their to be seen look um, as soon as they go into the kitchen they're going to be turned right side up and used my pottery is very rooted in tradition and when i say rooted i'm specifically referring to uh, another quote by Shoji Hamada. <laughs> um, so he talks about the way that um, potters gather influences by putting out roots. And, and those roots pull in water from lots of different sources. And then they come into the tree. And then all the tree needs is light to, to flourish and to make special works. Um, for me, I'm still a sapling. I've only been potting for about three years, but I still have those roots in tradition. So a lot of the other potters in the exhibition, the potters associated with uh, the Leach Hamada School, Glenn Lewis, who's one of the artists in the show, as well as Mick Henry, whose work was so love, lovely, love, <laughs> Mick Henry, whose work was so nicely installed by Naoko. Um, you know, those are, those are a lot of the potters who I, I look to. Um, and those potters themselves come from a tradition called the Leach Hamada tradition, which comes from working with Bernard Leach. And um, Bernard Leach and Shoji Hamada started the pottery in St. Ives that they worked at. So there's that direct trajectory to pottery in BC that I'm very inter interested in. And also all the people that have been inspired by them during that generation. Um, also all the people that they were looking to, I'm also looking to and also all the generation that came after them, and then I'm probably like the generation after that. Um, so like all these things, I, I collect pottery, so I'm surrounded by pots, by people whose work I love. And so that comes into my work. And so that's um, how I say uh, I'm influenced by tradition. That being said, um, working with a, an electric kiln as I have been is not a traditional method. Most traditional potters would normally high fire to cone tan in a gas kiln or a wood kiln or a salt kiln. Um, so that firing method is more contemporary. Um, but even Lucy, Lucy Ree, whose work is also in the show through Naoko's Gold, she worked only in electric kilns. So tradition is everywhere in pottery. And if you say you're making something new, I don't believe that's true. I don't think it's possible. <laughs> I guess I've known about Kintsugi for a long time. I lived in Japan for two years, between 2003 and 2005, and I think that's really where the spark of influence for me in pottery came. And so I saw a number of pots that had been lovingly Kintsugi'd <laughs> um, at that time. Um, but it, it's not something that I would have really thought about for my own work unless I met Naoko. So when I met Naoko, someone who is so passionate about this practice and so dedicated to their craft, uh, I was so honored that she agreed to uh, put Kintsugi on the lid of my teapot, but also two of the pots in my collection, uh, I commissioned her to do Kintsugi on, and those pots also ended up in this exhibition. So there's some really nice serendipities in those relationships that happened through this, this beautiful exhibition. Um, also, Glenn Lewis is someone that's uh, inspired me for a long time. I used to work at the Re Western Front as the curator, and uh, Glenn was one of the founding members of the Western Front, so I'm familiar with his work as an artist and his work as a potter. And I'm really interested in that moment early on when, um, in like the, the late 60s, early 70s in Vancouver, where all these potters were coming back from the Leech Pottery, um, including Glenn and Mick Henry and John Reeve, um, and Ian Steele in Nanaimo, and they were um, they were like influencing culture. And at, in these artist-run centers, the pot, pots would just be everywhere. So people would be having tea, but also people would be doing performances with pots. And so that that moment when um, like handmade things were valued in the everyday lives of culture makers um, that Glenn was such a big part of that was one of the sparks for me for my contribution to this exhibition. Gute Eriksson, who is a Danish potter, who is also uh, one of the Leech apprentices, said that pottery is teamwork throughout the ages. And so I feel like there's a lot of teamwork happening in this exhibition. <laughs>